I was looking at the different juice components and I wanted to do the progress bar. So I started to implement it. And when I implemented it, I also realized that I needed to have some simple uh, multi-threading going on for it to work properly. So this is gonna be a great tutorial because it's both progress bar and multi-threading in juice. So uh, let me show you what I got going on right here. Let me just build the app and I'm not even doing a plugin, I'm doing a GUI app. Uh, so this is my little app. I've got a button that runs just this stupid little math loop to make it take a long time. So right here, I've got my on click event for the button and I'm running this thing that I made called progress operation. And that is just uh, this for loop right here. Or I should say this for loop right here. It's just running uh, just some random calculations, just something that I know, you know, takes a while. And then every time it runs, I, I'm keeping track of which count we're on and then turning that into a percentage because the progress bar takes numbers between zero and one. So I'm just keeping a variable up to date on the current percentage. Obviously on the first run, it's at zero point whatever percent. And on the last run, it's at 100%. So I don't have the progress bar in here yet. I just have an operation that takes a long time whenever I run it. So let me show you real quick. Whenever I hit this button, it's gonna run that loop. I'm running it like 500 million times or something like that so that it takes a few seconds. Uh, and whenever it's done, you'll see done right here in the console. So let me click it right here. And you can see that since it's running in this on click event, the UI is locked and I can't even interact with this slider so like the, the thread is just stuck on this one operation that's running and it shouldn't run too much longer. Yeah, done. And now that it's done, I can interact with the UI again. So the UI is obviously running on a single thread. And whenever I click the button, we go into this progress operation, which is in here. And since this is taking however long it took, the whole UI is locked for that 10 seconds in this button on click. So the only way to really rectify that is to move this operation onto a thread. Uh, but before we do that, let me put the progress bar in here. So the juice progress bar is pretty simple. It's only got a couple of public member functions. It also doesn't have a default constructor. You can see that it expects something in, uh, in terms of parameters to build it. So, so if we wanna make one, I could say juice progress bar. And then I think I'll just call it meter. And if we just do that and we hit build, it'll tell us that we didn't fulfill the needs of the constructor. It says a uh, constructor must explicitly initialize the member meter because it doesn't have a default uh, constructor. So uh, one thing we could do is we're going to use this current percentage with the meter anyway. So I could pass that in right here in brackets and that would work yeah so that built so that's good the other way we could do this i'm gonna copy this juice progress bar we can use a smart pointer so we've done that before it's that std uh unique pointer and make unique so we could do that unique pointer this is really useful for if you have a class that you need to create an instance of you know at startup like this at initialization but you don't have access to this variable yet if you make it a unique pointer, you can go and construct it later. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go right here and say meter uh, is equal to, and just like the parameter attachments, um, it's gonna be STD make unique. Uh huh. I'm gonna paste the progress bar. And then we can give it the, the uh, variable for the constructor. So was it current percentage? Yeah. And the only annoying thing is now that this is a pointer, um, whenever we do things like add and make visible. So we're actually going to have to say meter dot get instead of just passing in meter because meter is a pointer. And then also uh, if we call any member functions on it. So for example, set percentage, set text to display or set bounds. Instead of using a dot, we're going to use an arrow. So I'll show you right here. You can see set bounds as an option. Since it's a pointer, we're using this arrow operator and paste that stuff in and let's see what happens. Make sure it comes up on the screen. Yeah, so here's the progress bar um, and it is currently 
or let me go to the documentation. The documentation actually tells you that you pass in a reference to a double that you're going to update with whatever you're using to update you know that thing and progress bar automatically monitors the uh monitors the value of this variable and redraws itself when the value changes so it's kind of already listening for you so let's run it and see what happens well it's running right now so let's restart it so right now it says zero i'm gonna hit engage and it's running our function we don't really see the progress bar moving we can't move this slider because the UI is locked on that single thread. And when it's done, the progress bar shows 100%, but we didn't get the actual progress. And that's because it's on a single thread. This function right now is running and the progress bar isn't able to write or isn't able to update itself because the thread is currently stuck on this. So we need to move this to another thread and we can actually do that pretty easily in Juice. So juice has its own thread object. So we can create a meter class. I'm gonna call it, I'm just gonna put it here in private, by the way, it doesn't really matter for this small example, but make a class, I'll call it meter thread. And it's gonna inherit from a public uh, juice thread. And in public, we have to implement, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be public, but we have to implement um, it's run method, but before that we also need to uh, give it a constructor juice thread and then give it something um, a name curly brackets. So there's the constructor. So that should take care of that uh, and we need the run function the actual thing that the thread is going to do. So it's an override function. So we just do it like this void run override. And then, yeah, we'll just implement it. And the easiest thing is I'm just going to take all of this stuff right here that's doing our progress. And I'm just going to stick it in there for the ease of use. Uh, yeah. And then in override or in run, we're going to run this progress operation uh, with run length. And I had to put it up to like 500 million for it to take, you know, long enough to actually make it uh, a good example. So we're going to call progress operation in the thread. So now this new thread is handling it. And we're going to go back into this button on click and instead we need to make an instance of our class that we just made meter thread meter thread meter thread uh, now we have an instance of this class so we can go into here and on click we're going to say meter thread and this is going to run on another thread we also need right here now it doesn't know what current percentage is because it's in meter thread so we could just say meter thread dot current percentage and then let's check out a couple other things with a uh, thread and besides creating an instance so we have start thread and we have stop thread which is pretty important uh this one is also really important signal thread should exit this is like a way to to force the thread to tell it to stop uh so i'm gonna actually use that whenever it's done running this so progress operation is gonna run for a few seconds right so whenever that's done, I'm going to say signal signal thread should exit. So we'll put that there, uh, which will tell the thread not to keep running after we're done with our, you know, our operation right here. And we can go ahead in the destructor. Probably be a good idea to also say stop thread uh, meter thread dot stop thread. Oh, yeah. And it gives it a timeout. So stop thread. A Attempts to stop the thread running. Hopefully the thread will then respond to this by exiting cleanly and the stop thread method will wait for a given time period for this to happen. If the thread is stuck and fails to respond after the timeout, it gets forcibly killed, which is a very bad thing to happen as it could still be holding locks ETC, which are needed by other parts of your program. In our case, I don't think that's really an issue. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm just gonna put a second. So there we go, stop thread. In the destructor just kind of doing some cleaning up after ourselves and i guess we're ready to try this so let's review we've got a progress bar object and i put it on the window um it's watching this current percentage which is being tracked in this loop and this loop takes like you know six seven eight seconds something like that oh wait is it start thread yeah it's okay yeah that was all it was. It's not run, it's start thread. I was calling run, which 
is just holding the operation. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to make it a little quicker. That's better. Okay, that's a good speed. Okay, so it's done. Okay, so the issue was, or sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I was doing that, but I was calling run, which run is only calling the, the process. It's not actually, you know, starting the thread on a new thread. So this is the whole point. So we're calling start thread, which will automatically call the run for us and it'll do everything. So check this out. We're gonna start up the app. We're gonna engage and the progress bar is actually going and we can move this fader, which means that the main UI thread isn't stuck. And we can see that whenever it was done, it printed out done. And we can do this over and over again. Yeah, and then whenever it's done, we're just calling signal thread should exit. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure there might be a little bit more involved in making, so, making sure that the thread stops cleanly. Because um, we have a couple of different methods. We've got stop thread, signal thread should exit. Oh, this is cool. There's also a wait. Suspends the execution of the thread until either the specified amount of time has elapsed or another thread calls notify. Oh, and then notify is cool because you can wake up the thread and then you can set priority, changes the thread's priority. That's pretty cool. I don't know when I would ever um, use these, but it's cool to have and it's cool to know that you can use a juice thread instead of a C++ thread, which, you know, come on. So yeah, that's the progress bar and basic multi-threading. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruising, where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the audio visual community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.